More than 100 years ago, people would think a bullet traveling at 1,500 miles per hour has the same mass equivalent to one that is sitting in the magazine. Think the same way? Well, it's not true. And this mass difference is just one phenomenon Einstein's equation explains. You probably think of mass as something you can measure with scales. Your clothes, your watch, your pet, your phone. All of this resembles mass to you. When you think of energy, you likely visualize something abstract, something you cannot touch, like lightning or battery power. So how could you possibly connect the two? The bridge connecting mass and energy is E equals mc squared. Common sense tells us the mass of an object equals the mass of its part, right? However, this simple rule breaks down when applied to protons. See, a proton is made of quarks, and their mass is roughly 1% of a proton's overall mass. But where does the rest of the proton's mass come from then? It comes from the energy a proton carries, the binding force keeping quarks together, and their motion make up for the missing 99%. That is one of the most conclusive pieces of evidence that energy and mass are exchangeable. So how does E equals mc squared explain the difference in mass of seemingly identical bullets? See, the equation tells us mass and energy are synonyms. Yes, the two bullets have the same mass when in the mag. However, as one of them leaves the rifle, it gains extra energy, kinetic to be precise, in addition to its rest energy. That's how the flying bullet's overall mass goes up. What about things that aren't moving? Do they also have energy? Whether it's movement, electricity or heat, we associate energy with work. What is truly life-changing is that even objects at rest contain rest energy, and lots of it. Imagine you could completely convert the mass of an object into energy, leaving no mass at all. You'd get unthinkable amounts of energy back out. Say you've managed to fully convert the mass of a liter of water into energy. You will get 90 quadrillion joules of energy. Just enough to power a 100 watt light bulb for more than 28 million years. The reason there's so much energy stored in a tiny bit of matter is that, according to Einstein's equation, you have to multiply that amount of mass by the speed of light squared, which is a huge number, to say the least. Since understanding Einstein's equation, scientists have come to believe that in the early universe, everything which is now matter used to be energy. Long story short, quarks and gluons formed protons and neutrons, which when combined with electrons, created the first atoms like helium and hydrogen. Think of it as steam becoming droplets of water once it cools. But what about the rest of the elements? Well, those are the products of various star events, serving as super-hot furnaces in order to synthesize heavier elements from helium and hydrogen by combining them under extreme pressure. The process is called stellar nucleosynthesis. Due to the extreme temperatures and pressures of giant stars, two helium atoms collide to form beryllium. Beryllium, with another helium element, creates carbon which, when combined with burning hydrogen, produces nitrogen, as well as other elements produced as the result of star phenomena like supernovae and merging neutron stars. The bottom line is that each atom, everything surrounding us, and even human beings themselves, are nothing but pure energy. So how come it's so difficult to believe we're all reservoirs for energy? Well, we just don't look at motion the right way. See, according to Einstein, an object's movement is only measured relative to something else. The observers need not agree on speeds or distances, as they may appear differently for each person. Now, let's say you're going to bed and you're going to sleep for the entire night. You'd expect to wake up exactly where you fell asleep relative to your room, and you didn't move. But take a look at the same situation relative to the sun or our galactic core. In this case scenario, you'd travel for a specific distance through space along with the Earth. And this distance will differ each time you change your relative position. Yes, that's a lot to understand. But it is what it is. The only thing we can all agree on is the speed of light. And this is exactly why it is a constant for appropriate measurements in the equation. But even objects that don't travel through space still travel through time. And space and time are integral aspects of the same thing space-time, 
This means that no object is ever truly at rest. So this means that each stationary object contains rest energy that we were talking about. The missing piece in E equals mc squared, making it harder to comprehend, is that it doesn't tell you how to convert mass into energy, but rather what amounts you will get if you succeed. Today, energy and mass equivalence blows our minds because it contradicts our usual perception of the world, but that doesn't make it less of a truth. Perhaps soon we will finally come to a point where everything could be explained by just one formula uniting all of humanity's knowledge. This could be both enticing and terrifying, as we'd have to re-identify what reality truly is and be ready to accept it whether it fits into the picture of our expectations or not.